I'll read his questions and then I'll read a bit of the letter which gives a bit of background uh, to the, the questions. But I'll dig out the questions first. Uh, uh, ah. Can alienated apes usefully meditate? And are they ready for Vajraloka? <laughs> <laughs> I'll read a bit of that. <laughs> rather more than a bit. Uh, all right, he, he says, huh? uh, I don't think he'll mind me reading this because it does light up the questions. So. I think uh, this, I think it's this, very definite attitude towards Vajraloka is probably shared by quite a few order members, so, uh, let alone Mitras, and I can't help feeling there are quite a few Michardittists which affect Vajraloka around at the moment. Hmm? Uh, he said, someone that Kamala Shila has been talking to, uh, that very recently he had been concentrating very much on developing his gross energies, becoming more identified with the ape within. Fair enough. He said he was only just beginning to make some progress in that and so felt that meditation was a long way off from where he was at. <laughs> uh, if he were to go to Vajraloka, he would only increase his alienation. He was not ready for a situation which he saw as one of intensive meditation. I told him that he didn't appear to me to be that alienated <laughs> and that you had said that any Mitra, it was a Mitra speaking to Kamala Shila, could benefit from a week there. Hmm? A lot three underlinings. Huh? A lot of people seem to think that meditation easily causes alienation and blocked emotion. I would have thought that it tends to expose one's basic emotion together with any refusal to acknowledge or express or else it exposes one's lack of feeling. But that's not all it does. It seems to have other effects too. People overvalue the psychological, so even though I am unfortunately not able to be there to hear your reply, I would like to contribute a question for the question-answer session. Can alienated apes usefully meditate? And are they ready for Vajraloka? <laughs> well, well, there's lots of trees around Vajraloka for them to swing on. <laughs> A lot of people seem to think that meditation easily causes alienation and blocked emotion. I think this is the crux huh, of the whole matter, not so much the actual questions asked. Huh? So let me deal with that. A lot of people seem to think that meditation easily causes alienation and blocked emotion. Uh, meditation in what sense? Did anyone ever hear of metta bhavana causing alienation or blocked emotion? I mean, I haven't yet. Huh? But it is true that if you are in an alienated state and practice the mindfulness of breathing, this may not be very helpful. Hmm? Uh, this may, if you're very alienated, increase your alienation. Yeah? But uh, it's not a question of advising such a person, huh? whether ape man or not, huh? uh, not to meditate. Do the metta bhavana. Hmm? Uh, because if you are out of touch with your emotions, well, the best thing you can do is to get straight back into contact with your emotions. And what better way of getting back into contact with your emotions uh, than by practicing the metta bhavana? Hmm? I do know, I am aware of the fact that metta bhavana, if people aren't very careful, tends to be neglected, hmm? as compared with the mindfulness of breathing. People seem to find on the whole mindfulness of breathing easier. At least they seem to the last time we generally discussed this topic. Huh? I have said originally, uh, especially in the days when I was taking classes myself down in London, that even though one starts with the mindfulness of breathing, uh, that being as it were more accessible and psychological and more of a technique, huh, one should aim as soon as one can at balancing the two practices and doing as much metta bhavana as mindfulness of breathing. I find, or I have found, that people tend to neglect the metta bhavana. And even some order members I have known 
at least from time to time, seem to give it up completely, yeah? as though uh, what is, is, as it were, too difficult. Yeah? But one must persevere. Huh? So if one is alienated, you know, whether an alienated ape or otherwise, huh? one should develop metta bhavana, huh? uh, take up that particular practice. Huh? So uh, I would say that even if you are trying to get into touch with, uh, what does one call them? Uh, is it gro- uh, grosser energies? Huh? Uh, which is quite sort of valid but you don't have to be at the same time completely out of touch with your more refined energies so if someone say was working on a building site in London no? or in, in a, a building team no? for a while and, and then wanted to go off to Vajraloka I see no way, reason why he shouldn't do so and why you know, going to Vajraloka for a spell uh, should uh, interfere with his you know, getting in touch with his gross energies. Sometimes in the course of meditation itself you encounter your grosser energies in a way that perhaps you didn't when you were on the uh, on the what do they call it? Uh, I'm forgetting all these, these terms don't often have to use them on the uh, building site huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> building site <laughs> I think that's what it's called uh, <laughs> Uh, sort of tend to mix these things up, you know, with cremation grounds. And <laughs> uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't usefully go off, uh, you know, and have a retreat. Uh, because if you have contacted your grosser energies, the meditation retreat will help you refine them a bit. And if you haven't contacted your grosser energies, well, the meditation retreat will help you do just that. I don't think one should be too precious about these grosser energies. That would seem to be a bit self-contradictory. I'm afraid of getting out of contact with my grosser <laughs> energies. You see? It's almost as bad as being afraid of getting out of contact with your more refined energies. Huh? So alternate a bit. Sometimes be a bit gross. Sometimes be a bit refined. Sometimes be on the building site. Sometimes be aware of Vajra Loka. And uh, if you are in any degree alienated, well, just get on with the metta bar for now. I think if you really do the metta bhavana properly, I think you could almost dispense with the mindfulness of breathing. You're certainly not unmindful when you're doing metta bhavana, but you may at least have a tendency uh, to, well, not exactly alienation from one's feelings, but a tendency to be not very feelingful, even though doing the mindfulness of breathing apparently quite successfully. So, so I'd say give great importance, central importance to the metta bhavana. I think that more or less answers you know, those, those two questions. So.